Hi, I'm Adam Bales, and I'm here to present on supervisor power and its effect on employee motivation and stress levels, specifically in relation to their locus of control and their self-esteem levels. So I split this presentation into three main parts. The first one would be me going over the power bases, and this is the star image you can see there. And then the second one would be talking about self-esteem issues in relation to supervisor power bases. And this is denoted by the man looking in the mirror. And then finally, you can see the fist picture, which denotes the last section of locus of control in relation to supervisor power bases. Now, French and Raven developed five main power bases initially. And the first one would be legitimate, which is power given to you from a position, like being a manager, for example, you have power over employees. And then there's reward power where you can have power over someone by offering them a reward, like do this task or and I'll give you a raise. And then on the flip side of that is coercive power, which is do this task or you're fired. And then there's also referent power, which is people listening to another because they feel like they like them. They're a personable, charismatic kind of person. That's what referent power is all about. And then there's also expert power, which is someone listening to someone else because they have high level of expertise and technical knowledge. So they understand, I don't know much about this, but you do, so I'm gonna listen to you. Now, moving into the self-esteem issues, people with low self-esteem tended to react positively to manager power bases. This is because they don't feel really confident in their own capability and work. So they really prefer, I guess, micromanagement is a easy way to put it, where they would really just prefer small specific tasks written out where they know exactly what they need to do because they don't like to take guesses. They're not very confident in their ability. So you can see, if you look at this graph here, that the motivation for people with low self-esteem went up and their stress went down when coercive and legitimate power was used. And it only shows two power bases here, but they tested on all five power bases and it was generally the same, except for the outlier expert, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, people with high self-esteem, you can see it wasn't as strong as an effect, but their motivation did go down and their stress did go up when power was used on them because these people really feel confident in themselves and their ability and they don't need someone breathing down their neck. Now, moving into the locus of control, it was interesting, there was a really high correlation between locus of control and self-esteem. So people who have a low self-esteem typically had external locus of control. And that means that they feel like everything's done to them. Their environment isn't because of them, their environment is affecting them. Everything they are is because of something else. And then there's also the correlation between people with high self-esteem and an internal locus of control. So these people believe that everything is within their own control. They can change things in their life if they want to and they try hard enough. Now, they had the same effects in this study as well. And you can see with the people who had an external locus of control, they think everything's done to them, their motivation went down when expert power was used. And that's the outlier I was talking about. So other than expert power, whenever power is applied, people with external locus of control and low self-esteem, their motivation goes up and their stress goes down. But with expert power, it's different. And this is because they feel threatened. When their manager has a lot of expert power, they think that they're they, they're worried that more technical skill might be required of them to please their manager. And they live for um, praise by their managers because they just need those words of approval. And so when there's a high expert level, they worry that they won't be able to get that. So naturally their stress will go up and their motivation will go down. On the flip side, people with an internal locus of control and high self-esteem react well to this because they understand that the person with expert power isn't a threat to them, but an asset to them because they're learning more and they, they're able to do more because of this expertise from this person. 
And going back to the rest of the power base, as you can see, again, with external locus of control, their stress goes down when power is applied and with internal locus of control and high self-esteem, their stress does go up. Now, in summary, power bases, I believe, should be applied differently per employee, if possible. I think it's important for a manager to see what motivates and stresses employees and be able to apply what's needed to get the job done and also help develop the employees. So we've talked about human resource management and human relation management and regimented management. And I think this is interesting. The reason it hasn't fully warped over to human resource management is because there's still a lot of people with low self-esteem. I mean, that's a major archetype in our society, the, the person with low self-esteem. And since that correlates with external locus of control, that makes it an even stronger reason why human resource management wouldn't work for them. So it's a really great environment for the people who have high self-esteem and, and internal locus of control because they like being able to tackle projects and bring their own expertise to it and improve the company in ways that they're able to. And that works really great for them. But these people with low self-esteem would probably even prefer to go back to regimented style of management, even though it's not as common. If you have any questions, please contact me at bales31, B-A-I-L-E-S, 31 at marshall.edu. Thank you.